of your faith <clears throat> and your love, I do not cease making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him, Father, uh, the eyes of of your understanding being enlightened that you may know experience what is the hope of his father's calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe According to the work of his mighty power, so which he worked in Christ when he was raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly place, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. Thank you. Continual prayer to the Father of glory for what? For the saints in Psalms 115 through 117. I do not what cease making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of revelation and the knowledge in him. Uh, Paul was writing from his prison cell in Rome to a church that he knew will sin, sin well since he established the church of Ephesians in Acts 19 and 20. Paul received what? He received reports that they, that they we filled with faith and love. This greatly encouraged Paul in his imprisonment. We see Paul's revelation of power of prayer. Paul did not cease to make mention of the Ephesian believers in prayer. God will give the spirit of revelation to us to the degree that we ask him to. We must not have trust God's sovereignty in and what? Unbiblical way by trusting him to do what? He requires us to do. We cannot do God's part and he will not do our part. We must seek to obey him as we fill our hearts with his words, as we ask him for what? For revelation. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek what? And you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened in Matthew 7 and 7. You do not have because you do not ask in James 4 and 2. We see Paul's revelation of power of prayer as well as his highest focus in prayer. For the spirit of revelation, Paul did not cease to make mention of Ephesians believers in prayer. Paul appealed to God as the God of Jesus and the Father of glory, as it was in Ephesians 1 and 17. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, what God did for Jesus is his humanity is the ideal picture of what God is committed to do for his people. We can make it through prayer and trusting in God. Prayer is essential in, in your life and where you are right now. It must come forth. The prayer 
uh, the prayer that, that that God has put in you, the purpose of prayer, your position of prayer. It is imperative that you know God, know his word, and begin to talk to God in prayer. Praying what without cease, it will give you the ability to have courage and be encouraged in faith, to walk courageous, unstoppable, because of the power of prayer. Father of glory, the glory that God possesses is the glory that he longs to impart to his people according to their hunger for it. That it is the core reality behind what? Behind this prayer. Paul had just outlined specific aspects of fathers willing to give his glory, spiritual blessings to his people in Christ. You'll find this one in Ephesians 3, uh, Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. This is one of the clearest and most comprehensive statements in the Bible describing the grace and the glory that God lavishes upon what his people God motivated by love predestined determined that those who said yes to Jesus would be made holy and blameless before him and would enjoy the exalted position of being his adopted children Oh, praise his name. Oh, glory. Another day, Osiah. His what? His adopted children. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you. God established the final plan to glorify his people in his sight. Paul is revealing that God's plan was predestined, determined, not the chose of the individuals the choice of the the choice of the individuals for this reason Paul continued in prayer that the saints would experience that we would experience more of what the predetermined plan which reveals God's longing and commitment to lavish his grace on us in Ephesians 1:15 to 17 he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters. You have crowned him, the redeemed with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands for it was the fitting for him and bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings in Hebrews 2, 7 through 10. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, bless his name. Therefore, what? I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mentions of you in my prayers. It was God's plan always to bring us into his glory. He planned to bring us into the heavenly realm uh, together with the earthly realm that we might experience his glory in the fullness forever. That's why oftentimes when I'm talking to him, I pray that the very thing in heaven that would also be formed in earth and that heaven and earth would come together. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, that heaven and earth would come together. My fa our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, so shall it be in earth. Heaven and earth come together. That the plan that God had for me today was the plan that was executed and it was in heaven and it was executed in earth. It was like I did what heaven said do and it, and, and it flourished 
and, and it blessed the earth. Oh, Shabbat. It was like heaven and earth came together. I was, it was no longer my will what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. The flesh may have said, well, go here, go there, go everywhere, and all that kind of stuff. But heaven and earth came together that what? That God would be glorified. This is the prayer of the believer. This is the space of the prayer of the believer. The mystery of his will. He might gather together and want all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth. Our spiritual foundation is receiving from the Father who gives his glory in different ways. He gives us his power, wisdom, love, tender mercy, and his affection. I'm not looking for it or, or believing in it from you and that and the other. I want that from the Father. He reveals his beauty in which he fascinates his people. He gives from what? His desire to share and part his glory to those he loves. There's nothing like the presence of God. This is why, you know, men should always pray and not cease. Or thy word have I hid in thy heart. Because even reading the scriptures prophetically be, become profound. And when, you be, when your bones and your tissues are, are repeating them, it's a sense of praying or speaking to God based on the prophets the apostles. God is his word. The spirit of what? The spirit of wisdom and the revelation and knowledge of God. The father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know, experience, what is the hope of his calling? What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? In Ephesians, again, 1, 17 through 19, we got to hold on to this. Paul prayed what? That they might come to more fulfilling experiences the knowledge of God in active intimacy as the only way to walk in the glory of these spiritual blessings. In what? In this life. This prayer for active intimacy with God has one general request with three specific foundation, uh, we, three specific requests that the flow out in the main one, Paul understood that the intimacy of God was the essential foundation for us to experience the three specific requests. One, it is helpful to know that Paul's primary prayer focus was that people know or encounter God by receiving the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It is imperative that we see that, you know, I was talking to somebody not long ago and I was just amazed about what they knew and what they didn't know. You know, or then, you know, like you sit and you talk to people and, you know, you may get a call from somebody or or you may run into somebody. Uh, and and uh, um, I think my, my son was telling me something about that earlier today. And you'd be wondering yourself, well, I don't know why in the world, this per why is this person calling me? Why, you know, I had to, I had an incident today with a, um, with a, with a, with a friend or somebody that I do business with. And I, you know, for the life of me, I just couldn't understand. They asked me, they requested uh, something or they requested my presence and I couldn't understand why. But yet I know that I'm in this presence, in this space of God. And so all kinds of things happen. What? I know that I will have receiving, I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Two, in, in other words, to receive living understanding, divine illumination as God the spirit 
reveals God the Father and Son to the human spirit. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to say that one more time for you. Yeah, I've been studying this. In other words, to receive living understanding, divine illumination as God the Spirit reveals.